continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie, Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi, Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington, Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson, Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson, Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington, Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington, James Douglas as Stephen Cord. to that terrifying moment in her life when she first met the late Joe Chernak. Back to a warehouse on the Peyton Place Wharf, where, in the shadows, she accepted a way of life that has tormented her ever since. I'm not Joe Charnock, you understand? I never even knew Charnock. Charnock is dead. I'm Joe Rossi. Come on, look at me. Look at me. I don't want to have to hide every time I see you coming. You see, I'm not Joe Charnock. I'm sorry I had to put my hand over your face. Just take it easy. I'm so dizzy. Just sit back. Dad, stop it. Please stop it. I didn't want to fight him. I told him. What is it? You gotta get down to the wharf right away with your black bag. It's Eddie Jacks. He's hurt. Hurt, huh? 
Joe? It was a fight. Well, you had a fight with Eddie Jackson, a man three times your age? Look, he started it. I had to slug him or else he'd have killed me. All right, where is he? He's right out in front of the tavern. Well, I'll be right down. Look, Rita saw the whole thing. I mean, she'll tell you that he was in the wrong, not me. Mike? Mike? <laughs> jangle in your head like that. You might have internal injuries. If I had internal injuries, I'd know it. It's a good thing I showed up when I did. I told Ada he was a bad kid, didn't I, Ada? How many times I say that, Ada? Mom, Joe didn't do anything. He wasn't even bothering me. What do you mean he wasn't bothering you? I was there. I saw him with my own eyes. Eddie, please. If I hadn't come into that warehouse when I did... It's not what you think. Really, it was all my fault. Rita, Rita, I... Rita. What? How can you say that it was all your fault? No, Rita, Eddie, Rita. Eddie, Eddie, lie down. Rita. Do you want to kill yourself? Okay, folks. That's all for tonight. Early closing. Good night. You need any help, Ada? No, no thanks. Good night. my brother. Then wait for him outside. you going to ask me? What, honey? What I was doing there. Why I went back to the warehouse. You want to tell me? You don't have to. You think I did it for some kind of sick reason. That's what you're thinking right now, isn't it? She's sick. She wanted to get some kind of ugly kick out of going over it all again. Look, honey. You haven't been well for a long, long time. You just didn't know what you were doing. It wasn't your fault. I knew what I was doing. I had to go back there. I didn't want to. I had to make myself do it. You have to understand, Mom. Go on, honey. I was scared. If it hadn't been for Mr. Winter, I never would have gotten the courage up. He made me realize that's what it took, courage, to, to bury the past, to face up to all the bad things in it, and then make yourself forget them. He said you have to, to want to forget them, but a lot of people make crutches out of the bad things and spend the rest of their lives making themselves and everybody else miserable. He said that's what I was doing, and I'd better snap out of it. Doesn't sound like the Reverend Winter was much comfort. Maybe he wasn't cut out to be a minister. That's what I told him. I hated him. I, w I wanted him to feel sorry for me. I went over to his house this morning. I wanted to make him be sorry. It's a good thing he couldn't spare the time. That made me mad like he'd written me off already. So I started walking around all day. I was just trying to get up the nerve to do it, you know, to go back in there. I, I don't know, now maybe it was a foolish idea. But finally it worked. I was scared of, I don't know what. But 
not scared of Joe Chernick anymore. He is dead. So is the girl that went with him. I knew it when I was standing there. It was just like Mr. Winters said. I could never be that girl again. He said I had to find that out for myself, and then I'd be well. She wasn't so bad, that girl. There's another thing Mr. Winter made me understand. He told me I had to stop punishing the people who loved me. He said it was a common failing that we all did it just to punish ourselves. And one day there's no one left to love us. When I lost the baby, I, I really wanted to hurt you and Norman and Dad. I'm so sorry. You know, when I lost your father, when he walked out on me, I took it out on you. Poor Eddie, he, he didn't have anybody until, until Joe Rossi. Rita? Rita? Oh, Norman. <laughs> I love you. Please say you still love me. I'm all right. I, I'm just a little groggy, that's all. You shouldn't have been moved, did he? Oh, oh, see. I guess I I could use something for the for the pain. It feels like I still got a glass of water. Fist in my stomach. Get him out of here. Get that young punk. Out of here. I don't want him near her. Dad. Do you hear? If he so much as comes close to her again, I'll... Oh, take it easy, old man. Nobody's gonna do anything to your kid. Can't you get that through your head? Here, take this. I'm afraid that's gonna take a couple of stitches. How are you hurt, Eddie? Dr. Rossi, not now. He's all mixed up. It wasn't like he thinks. Joe didn't do anything. Your father's the victim. He's entitled to tell us how he got hurt. The bare facts are that that young hoodlum, your, your brother, tried to attack my daughter. I stopped him. That's a lie. You came charging that warehouse like you were out of your mind. He followed her, Doc. He followed Rita. Sure, I just wanted to talk to her. I wanted to tell her that you and Norm were out looking for her. That's all. It's the truth. He didn't do anything. He just wanted me to go home. Norm, you have to believe me. Please. You better be telling the truth. Man, you know that's the truth. I mean, why should I try to pull something like he says, huh? I mean, I like Rita and you. You're my friends. Her old man's been bugging me ever since I came to this town. And what about the time you took me up to your place, huh? The hard time he gave me? I mean, I told you. I mean, he's had it in for me. Maybe I shouldn't have hit him. But you know me, Mike. I don't have to go around picking on old men. And I don't have to go around picking on girls. Oh, no. Well, why don't you tell your big brother the time you tried to use your manly persuasion on your old girlfriend, on Jill, hmm? Go ahead. Ask him. Or don't you want to know? I was a bit late that time, but I, I've never seen a girl so scared in all of my life. Isn't that right, Eli? She even had to put a lock on her door, didn't she? That's right. Well, he never tried to hurt me, never. You have to believe him. He's your brother. Norman, you and Eli, help me. Get to the hospital, and I'll follow you. Come on, Eddie. Mm. Well, if Norman's going to the hospital, I'll take you home. I'll go get my coat. You wait here. Take him to the hospital and I'll be there shortly. 